when when I started attending the university, um, in fact, they they put out I don't know if you call it a training course or just a heads up or whatever, and they're like, "Hey, listen, because I was on the track where you go to seminary next," mm-hmm. and they're saying a lot of people get into this program because they enjoy the prestige of being a minister, um, you know, right. for the vanity of it and that sort of thing, and right. you know, and it's just like. So they try to warn you against that and they're like, hey, draw closer to God, go deeper in your faith while you're here going through this curriculum. That way, when you do enter into seminary, et cetera, and go into your ministries, um, you've done so protected against, you know, the the stroking of the ego. Yes. That sort of thing. Wow. So even they address it, I mean, very openly. Um, wow. Not all ministers are going in because they actually have that very genuine or authentic desire to simply minister to others. Um, there is a culture there where they have to battle the ego and, and, uh, and, you know, try to become more self-sacrificing in their ministries. Yeah. Now I wonder if seminar seminary and, and like the school you went to, if, if the higher ups, the people who govern those institutions, if uh, if they have great jobs, maybe they make a good income, and they 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 know the secrets behind a lot of what's going on. And I wonder <laughs> if there's some hush hush going on with people coming in there, like we don't talk about this or that kind. I wonder if there's a lot of that going on. Yeah. So I'm. So in my previous career, I was in law enforcement. I did uh, investigations and patrols and that whole sort of thing. And usually, yeah. when you start seeing indicators of something on the periphery there's a much larger story going on on the inside yes we're we're not talking about conspiracy type stuff we're just talking Mm -hmm. about it's just the way things are and investigative work yeah and when you see things aren't adding up on the outside your mind start noticing and and picks up on those patterns and then you get drawn into the story right this is why Mm. uh the historicity of biblical claims doesn't always match up. And then you get people like us who might've been Christians at some point. And we're like, well, why not? What's the real story going on there? Right. So what I think is there's obviously controls, well, well-meaning controls in your university settings as you are shaping the next generation and culture to come up and take the stand for Christianity uh, to ensure that they are equipped to offer a proper apologetics, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, But at the same time, you gotta be very careful because those who are intuitive about behavior will see those forms of controls as something that's simply meant to manipulate or manufacture Yeah, like why do we need apologetics? What's the problem? Yeah, (laughs) yeah, what's the problem? (laughs) Yeah. Exactly. That would be me. And I'm that kind of guy. So as soon as I got my nose in the business, I was like, oh, okay. What's what? Why is this? Why is this? Why is this? And then it's like, woo. I was yeah. brainwashed. I was brainwashed. It, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But, 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 you know, you're thinking going into an apologetics program um, that we simply need to learn more about the Bible. And then if when we do that, We'll be able to educate others. But the only problem is the education that you receive on the Bible only kind of like hurts the image, mm. actually. And you find out the training you receive as someone who's trying to def- give a defense for the faith, you're actually trying to rationalize and reason away the attacks on it rather than mm-hmm. coming from a position of power from the Bible you are doing what people call these mental gymnastics and theological gymnastics mm-hmm. to kind of work your way around it and try to ad hominem discredit those people who are attacking. And, wow. um, and, and there's and, flourishing careers in that field. <laughs> William Lane Craig is doing quite nice. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so you, so, so then you get a lot of these presuppositionalist positions, um, where that's where that's that's the position from which they argue or or they argue from a position of faith or from belief and if you don't start there as let's say an atheist or just someone who's a skeptic even if you are a christian 
um, you'll never have the same conversation. They'll be different the whole time. And then no wonder we can't have these conversations and arrive somewhere in a debate. It's because we start in these fundamentally different mm -hmm. places, which is why I love seeing some of your content because you kind of just state it plainly what all this mm -hmm. is. And then you give a great kind of, it, like you even inform on Christianity so people know that you're coming from a place uh, mm -hmm. that's that's not just uh you know punching christianity and be like oh look at you guys and what you believe like you demonstrate mm -hmm. an understanding can i ask mm -hmm. you what's one of your favorite things to talk about do you have a favorite subject or something that you like pointing out or what's like kind of your go-to anything like well, that well well obviously obviously it's christianity um christian theology and christian history um that's where I, I, I dive in most of my time, but I am a person who never watches TV. I don't do much. I, I study, uh, I'm growing the beard. I'm trying to become Merlin. The older <laughs> I, get. I was going to say, you got me beat on that. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I just, um, I just, uh, but I do ponder heavily into, um, the science of neurology because I'm very interested in consciousness and also quantum physics. Mm. But but just as a hobby, I mean, my main interest is, of course, Christianity. And and I need to stay sharp in that because that's kind of now that I'm uh, somewhat of a, a growing public figure, um, I will be asked to do interviews on shows like yours. Yeah. And so I need to stay sharp. And that's that's kind of where I spend most of my time. But uh, I do appreciate your um, compliments on my videos because. Absolutely. You know, they they did not happen overnight. They basically charted my entire um, conversion process. It just mm -hmm. went into just went into word. I'm a writer. And so I um, I wrote and wrote and wrote just all these reasons of why I was losing my religion. And mm -hmm. by the end of it, after a couple of years, I had pages and pages and pages of manuscripts. So, <laughs> yeah. And, and, and that reflects in my videos, all that, all that. So you, it's like you're walking through my shoes. If you're a Christian who's on the fence and you watch one of my videos, you might really feel related to them. Absolutely. <laughs> I can't. Yeah. I can't, I can't, I'm still fresh in that. Okay. So I deconverted a little less than a year ago. Um, okay. Let me see. I, so this is July now. I came, I came out as a non-believer. Mm -hmm this year and uh um, wow. and i had already met with uh somebody hooked me up with arn raw and okay. I, I flew out to dallas you know we did this interview and we just aired the finale today at 5 p.m for that 10 okay. episode series and wow. uh, i had met him and he invited me to this atheist convention the american atheist conference over in oklahoma city mm -hmm. and i had no experience with this i was you, if you go through the series and watch the series, you can hear a lot of the questions that I ask him and you can tell. I've seen, yeah, I've seen some of it already. Yeah, you, you can tell like, yeah, it doesn't seem like I believe it anymore, but I'm still like kind of punching a few of those questions out yeah, that, that Christians yeah. are always asking. Well, if there's no God, where's yeah. the lie for You're just saying yeah. this because or, you know, or, you know, whatever. And um, so when you when you're talking about kind of your chronicles of your deconversion. Like I did the same thing. I, I started going online, but I realized my audience was my community, my Christian community. And mm. um, where there was some feedback there, I noticed the more you ask questions and the more you really pry into the substance of what is our faith, the more they kind of push you back. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to engage on those topics because number one, Jeff, most people simply aren't educated on their Bible. Yeah. And two, these are challenging questions that often have no answers or no credible answers. So they find yes. themselves at a place where there is nowhere to turn to in the Bible to, to answer what is really just basic questions. I find it so easy to corner a Christian. <laughs> even even your intelligent ones like mm. i did it i did this with the uh, um creation scientist ceo or something i had him cornered in no time yeah and uh i have him admitting 
on film that he does not know. Well, yeah. One of the questions I asked him. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, they got nowhere to run. If you, I mean, people like me and you who have educated themselves and we've woken up, I mean, they, they have nowhere to run. There's some tough questions for them that are, remain unanswered.